Welcome to Toy Poloi. Hello and welcome to another video from Toy Ploy. And in today's video, we're taking a look at five new figures from the Next 17. Now, I've reviewed their figures before. They've sent over quite a few of uh, the figures that they've been producing over the last couple of years. And very kindly, Graham from uh, the Next 17 has just sent over uh, five new figures for me to check out and review. We have four figures that are from the Cantina on Moss Eisley. And then we have one figure that is from uh, Jabba's Palace. So let me give you the names of them and then we'll take a closer look at them. The Jabba's Palace figure, which is that guy on the right, is Hermie Odal. Then we have in the middle, we have uh, Dr. Everson, who is the sort of barkeeper at the uh, Moss Eisley Cantina. Then to the right of him, we have uh, Fatty Pern, I think is his name. To the left, we then have Hem Dozen, and then we have a custom version of uh, Hem Dozen, which is called El Les. As I say, these are all new figures with all new sculpts, so uh, let's take a closer look at them, see what they look like. So, first up, we're going to take a look at the three figures from the Cantina. So, in the middle, we have uh, Dr. Everson, who is the sort of patron or the owner of the Moss Eisley Cantina. He is a pretty cool looking figure. As you can see, this is done in a vintage Star Wars style. So uh, you can see he's got a limited articulation, so five points of articulation. We can move his head, we can move his arms, and we can move his legs. It's really nicely detailed, actually. There's a, a very uh, good quality sculpt going on here. Lots of uh, nice folds and details put on his uh, shirt there. He has this little uh, fabric waistcoat that goes over the top, which is made in a very sort of a vintage style material. It's like the toy knit art that I use when I'm uh, making capes. He comes with a one little accessory, which is this little glass. I think that's actually a pretty cool accessory to uh, have with him. He's certainly very in keeping with him as a barkeeper. There's a fair amount of paint detail going on that's uh, in sort of line with uh, how vintage figures look. So we've got a little bit of paint detail there on his face. You've got one eye painted and he's got his one disfigured eye on that side. And then he's got some uh, paint detail on his belt. So a little bit of black paint there and a buckle painted on and then some brown trousers and some dark boots. I think this is a really nice figure. It's very well made and it certainly feels like a vintage Star Wars figure. It's got the right sort of weight to it. On the back of the leg, I can actually see we've now got a, a copyright uh, little marking there that says TN1723. So that's the next 17 and I guess the year 23. Now, the interesting thing about these figures is to uh, keep costs down in, in producing them. They all use the same bodies. Uh, the arms and the heads are different, but the body and the legs of these three figures are exactly the same. They've just got slightly different paint applications. And you know what? When you first look at these figures, you wouldn't actually notice that that, that is how they had been constructed. Constructed. It works remarkably well. By having different accessories and uh, different colour schemes, you really don't notice that that's how they've been uh, created. But I think it's a very clever and a sort of cost effective way of doing it. So we'll now look at the guy on the right, which is uh, Falty Pan, I think his name is. If I got the names wrong, then I do apologise. This is one of the uh, people who sort of frequent the cantina. So he's a really weird little uh, alien looking thing. But it really does look like the uh, character you see in the movies. There's a nice amount of detail there, but it's in that sort of retro style. So as I say, the body and the legs are the same as Dr. Everson's, but just with a slightly different paint application. So on him, he's got uh, blue trousers and brown boots. And then the arms have been changed. So you can see the arms now match his head. We've got sort of uh, blue sleeves and his sort of, um, well, little furry arms there. This guy comes with a weapon, as you can see there, which is an all new design as well. That's not a Star Wars blaster that we've seen before. And it fits very snugly in either hands. It's got a unique little uh, handle there that does actually clip really well. So these uh, guys are not going to be dropping their weapons at any time soon. And then we have the third figure from uh, this uh, series, which is this guy here, which is Ham Dazon. Again, the body and the legs are the same as those, but painted in a different color, you really wouldn't notice. And then we've got, again, this very unique head that you do clearly see in the cantina. If you uh, watch Star Wars as many times as I have, you will recognise him straight away. That's a really nice sculpted one. He's got shiny uh, sort of metallic gold eyes there. I think that's a lovely looking figure, really nicely made. It sort of reminds me of uh, Hammerhead in the way he's got sort of all the folds and wrinkles in his skin. Then he has got uh, completely different arms as well, which uh, match his head. He comes with the same weapon, uh, but in a slightly different colour. So this is in a black plastic. Again, it fits really snugly in his hand. And he has this really uniquely designed cape. I really like the way this cape has been designed. It um, sort of folds in a unique way so that it hangs round the back and sort of scoops around the front. And then you've got a bit that looks like a waistcoat underneath. I think that is a really clever way of uh, designing a cape. There's no sewing involved in that. It's just the way it's sort of folded. So you've got this bit that looks like a really large collar, but when you fold it down, it turns it into a cape. So you've got a sort of under cape and over cape. 
I think that's a very clever design indeed. But as you can see, they look absolutely fantastic. These are certainly very nice looking figures. And the fact that they all use the same bodies but have different parts added to them, you really don't notice it at all. It's very cleverly done. And next we have a slight variation on the uh, Hem Dazon figure, which is a sort of a recolor of him. And apparently this is one that uh, Graham wanted to get done himself. He really wanted something in very sort of bright gearish colors. So it's the uh, same figure, but this time he's got an orange sort of jacket on, beige trousers, black boots, and his skin has been turned into this sort of very greeny blue color. And again, a lovely bright orange cape. The cape design on this one is not the same as that one, so it sort of hangs slightly differently. And he comes with two versions of that new weapon in a bright blue plastic. So this guy, Although sort of is not one that you actually see in the cantina, you could imagine him off in the distance and he's a, yeah, as I say, sort of custom coloured version. I really quite like that because it sort of does look like um, Greedo, you know, and Greedo's colours on the original Star Wars figures are really not that close to uh, how he appears in the movie. He's really bright. In fact, uh, I think Walrus Man is the same. Walrus Man is incredibly sort of bright and garish colours and doesn't look anything like he does uh, in the movie. So something like this actually fits in pretty well with those uh, early Star Wars figures. This one is a sort of limited edition uh, figure by the sounds of it. There aren't that many uh, sort of copies of him available. So if you want to grab this one, uh, you need to head to the uh, Next17 website, but pretty quickish. I think the other ones have been made in larger numbers, but the, this guy here is going to be one of those ones. Uh, if you don't get him now, I don't think you will get him in future. So uh, yeah, he's a pretty cool looking guy though. Then we come on to the largest figure in this pack, which is Hermie Odal, who is a, a character that you see in the background of Jabba's Palace. And this is a really large, chunky figure. You'll have seen me uh, review another of the uh, sort of large, chunky figures from the next 17, which is the Effont Mon. And he was a really sort of big weighty figure and uh, they've done exactly the same with this one. So this guy is uh, really quite huge. He weighs quite a bit and I think they've done a fantastic job in turning what is a rather unique uh, sort of background character in Return of the Jedi and turning him into a figure. He comes with this accessory which is a sort of uh, well, it's a wooden stick with a little sort of uh, gem at the top of it, it looks like to me. Uh, and then you've got a limited articulation on him just because he's so large. You can't move his face, but you can move his arms up and down. And then his legs rotate and they rotate out so that he sort of ends up in a sitting position. I think he's really rather a lovely figure. I'm not sure this is the sort of thing that um, they would have made back in the day just because uh, it would have cost them far too much to make. But he's a really unique figure. And if you're making dioramas uh, of, uh, of sort of vintage Star Wars figures, he would be absolutely excellent to uh, have in your Jabba's palace. He's a very unique looking guy. I'd almost be inclined to make him some sort of cape because uh, when you see him in the movie, he's sort of shrouded in this uh, grey sort of blackish looking cape and I think you could have something like that hanging over the top of him and that would make him look even better than he already does but I have to say he already looks pretty uh, cool he's got lots of detail on him there's lovely uh, sculpting and detailing on his feet there to show lots of sort of bands or strips of fabric wrapped around it and nice folds detailed around all of his uh, clothing and then he's got that really unique face with his tiny little eyes and his tongue sticking out the side I think he is a very unique figure indeed Let's put his weapon back in so you can see him in his full glory. That is really rather cool. So uh, yeah, I'm going to put him with my uh, Effont Mon and my Jabba the Hutt because I think he's going to sit with them very nicely indeed. As well as the figure, you get these tiny little uh, sort of slug-like creatures which uh, you could dot around your diorama. Considering the size of these, they are incredibly uh, well detailed. Lots of uh, sort of uh, ribbing and um, sort of little claws and whatnot on them. And they even have their eyes painted on. They come in two different sizes. So we've got a larger one here and these uh, two little small ones but they look uh, fantastic if you just drop them around the uh, feet of your uh, figures. Uh, there's also a little uh, thermal detonator which I think is really pretty cool. It's got uh, loads of detail on it. It's been painted in a nice sort of shiny silver uh, paint and then we've got the black strip around the middle and even a little uh, red light on the front of it. And this fits uh, really well in the hands of uh, these figures. It's got a little uh, stem to it so it actually can be held. If it was just the ball I don't think you would uh, get a figure to hold it but with the stem you can actually slot this into the hand 
and you can see that they can hold a little thermal detonator. I think that's a pretty cool accessory. I can see that uh, sitting really well with the uh, Leia Bouche figure, so that's a nice little accessory as well. And then we have uh, one final accessory, which is a large scale lightsaber, which is designed to fit in his hand. So uh, the hilt of this lightsaber is much bigger than uh, the normal ones that you've got on previous figures from the Next 17. And this is designed to uh, fit in his hand. So uh, yeah, some cool accessories that come with him. I think I most uh, like these uh, little thermal detonator. I can see that being very useful. And I certainly, uh, yeah, I'm gonna be putting that with Boosh. But I have to say, I do really like this figure. It's such a unique looking thing. And if you haven't checked out my review of uh, the F11, then I would uh, suggest looking at that because these two figures together are gonna to look absolutely fantastic. So there we have it. That's five new figures from the Next 17, all done in a retro style. And I have to say, I think these are looking really good. I love the way they've uh, reused the body and made the most out of the molds they have to get three completely different looking figures when uh, sort of big parts of them are exactly the same is really clever thinking and I think the way they've done it and the way they've uh, recolored things and given uh, different accessories just makes them look absolutely brilliant and these are ideal to uh, put in your uh, dioramas I'm certainly going to be putting these with the uh, rest of my Star Wars figures because I think they fit in so nicely if you want to get these figures for yourself then do head to the next17.com I will put links to that in the description uh, they have a whole selection of figures that they've produced now so uh, do check out some of their other ones and check out some of my other reviews of the, the previous waves of figures that they have been producing if you've enjoyed this video then make sure to hit the subscribe button and tap the bell to be notified each time I upload a new video and thanks for watching. Thanks for watching Toy Ploy. Subscribe for more great videos.